Factories are big, and really they have to be, because a lot of stuff gets made in them, and they can't exactly be small now, can they? But some factories are so colossal, they are basically countries. These are 20 biggest factories in the world. Number 20. The Wolfsburg Volkswagen Factory We'll begin with a factory in an industry that's justified in having such a massive building space. The automotive industry. Despite its many, many flaws, billions of people all over the world have cars. As such, automotive leaders have to do their best to have as many models of their various vehicles as possible to ensure that they can, at the very least, compete for the attention of new customers. Enter Volkswagen. The company was begun when people realized that in order to help make the people of the country happy, they had to have a nice car to drive. The Volkswagen factory was then born. The factory that I'm talking about now is the same one from 1938 when it was originally constructed. It's just gone through some obvious overhauls over the years. To that end, even today, it is the worldwide headquarters for the Volkswagen brand, and yes, it is one of the largest manufacturing plants in the world, in terms of area at just under 6.5 million meters squared, which is pretty big. There's 12 miles of this. Each station has just 60 seconds to complete their task. For reference of how many cars it can produce in a single year, well, it did over 800,000 vehicles in 2015 alone. One thing to note about the massive space for the factory is that it was designed to be that way from the very beginning. You have to remember, during the time, Germany was going through an overhaul in more ways than one, and these vehicles would be part of that process. Plus, it was built next to a small town where their workers would be able to live with their families and also be close to the workplace, a practice that is still in use today in many ways. Though, to be fair, it wasn't a cheap project, especially given where Germany was at the time. It was $40 million during that time period, which today would be over $850 million. So that's a monetary drain for sure. But in the end, the project worked out and the brand still stands today. Now it's time for the sweet topic. Before you go screaming at me and tell me the image is fake, well, don't worry, we already know, but it's one that has been made to try and showcase a claim that somebody reported online. That individual claimed to be a farmer working in a particularly large Chinese meat factory. When this person recounted their first-hand experience of what the factory they worked in was like, people reading his post simply could not believe how brutal and unsanitary the conditions were. This image, artistically recreating some of the things that he said he saw, is truly horrifying. We know the meat industry is kind of terrifying, but I had no idea it was this bad. As always, you can comment down below using the hashtag SweetTopic and let me know what you think about what you just saw on the screen. Number 19. Lauma Fabrics Latvia Now, we've talked about the car industry, which makes sense, having such a large building space, but what about an industry where you wouldn't immediately think that they have that need, like a textile mill in Latvia? Enter the Lauma Fabrics Latvia, which was a company and factory made in 1971, and it had its main building done by 1977. It does take a while to make these things. At their peak, they had over 5,000 people in the factory doing all kinds of work in various textiles and fabrics. And when it comes to where they are right now, well, they ship a bunch of products to over 20 countries from all over the world. One of the things that has helped to separate this group from others is their desire to bring in people who have an eye not only for great design, but for environmental consciousness. Such as when one of their lead designers decided to make a great fabric that would rival the cotton industry without having to worry about the environmental damage that farming often caused. They were able to make that happen in 2005, and that's when Lauma changed themselves to the Lauma Fabrics brand. As for what they make the fabric for, well, let's just say it's for certain garments that women are known to wear. The material, known as tinsel, is apparently one of the best on the market, and they've got about 30 variants of it that are being produced and shipped out to all sorts of manufacturers. The stuff is so good, it doesn't only lay on your skin, it can technically help it. People with sensitive skin are big supporters of the brand because they know how it makes them feel. And with that kind of need and reach, it's no wonder that they have such a big factory. Number 18. Foxconn 
Cars, textiles, fabrics, there are a lot of things that need a big factory. And of course, technology fits into that bill. The company known as Foxconn, well, they produce iPhones amongst other things. The Foxconn company manufactures electronic products for American, Canadian, Chinese, and other countries. But as noted, it doesn't only pertain to iPhones. They've also been big in BlackBerry, Kindle, and even making some of your favorite Nintendo and Sony gaming systems. As you can imagine, with that many electronics to make and plenty of customers worldwide to ship out to, they would need quite the large factory to get it all done. That's where their factory in China comes into play. This is a place that is literally built to make every one of those items and get them done in a quick amount of time. Sometimes a little bit too quick, and then it ends up hurting the workers as you can imagine. Foxconn's compound makes about half of the world's iPhones. Nicknamed iPhone City, it covers an area of 5.6 square kilometers, about one-tenth the size of Manhattan. And at its peak, it can have up to 200,000 people working inside. But the workers are treated well inside there, right? Well, not exactly. There have been a whole lot of protests that have taken place at the factory over the years, which included during the pandemic. While they are paid fairly, much like certain other companies, they're worked to the bone, have very strict schedules and expectations, and they can't take things like bathroom breaks without somehow making up for the lost time. What goes through your mind when you do the same thing all day long? So just imagine doing that every day in a factory that's closed off while being constantly monitored and never getting to take a true break outside of lunch. That's the dark side of these factories. They can be good for business, but bad for their employees. Number 17. Hyundai Motors Olsen Plant Now let's get back to the car industry for a moment, but instead of going to Germany, we head to South Korea. This is a nation that has been an industry leader in many sectors for some time, and that also includes in technology, so it's no small wonder that for a while now, including 2016, the Hyundai Motors Olsen plant in South Korea was the one cranking out more cars than anyone else in the industry. Just how big and efficient is the place, though? Well, simply put, this one plant is made out of five different factories, and when they're running at full steam, they're said to make a car every 10 seconds, which is really, really fast. In 2015, they cranked out over 1.5 million cars in just one year. Across a total of 15 million square meters, the equivalent of 700 football pitches, five different factories produced 14 different models that were shipped worldwide. Just think about that for a moment. Think about everything that would have to go into making that happen, and then making it happen consistently. That's why Hyundai did all of this with this plant, and it's truly remarkable. But how exactly was it accomplished? They don't simply work their employees to the bone, do they? Well, no, not in the way that some factories do. Instead, they make full use out of the 24-hour day by having two shifts of workers, from 6.45 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., and then 3.30 p.m. to 12.30 a.m., they almost always have somebody on the floor. As if that wasn't enough, they have special dormitories that workers can stay in, and about a thousand of them take them up on that offer. So, they take care of the employees, even shutting down on weekends, and giving them a week off during the summer. If only every factory were this kind to the people that work for them. Number 16. Allstall USA It's not only cars that need massive factories in order to get the job done. There are other things that are much larger than cars. You know, like ships, and not just your average little boat that you may take out with your family or to go fishing in, but the massive steel battleships that you see with various militaries of the world. And that's where companies like Allstall USA come into play. You can find them in Alabama of all places, and they boast having one of the biggest steel panel lines that are out there, which allows them to make both aluminum and steel ships for the United States. For context, they have provided ships of all kinds to both the US Navy and the United States Coast Guard, including unmanned ships. And equally as important, they're very recently announced that they're going to be expanding their facilities. Once completed, their entire shipyard will have a 10,900 square meter steel panel line with two module manufacturing spaces for serial production and seven assembly bays with indoor erection space. The point is, they're very popular and they clearly do good work if they're going to get the ability to make all of these ships and expand their space so that they can do even more. Number 15. Samsung Electronics Vietnam 
If you're already getting flags from hearing that full name, well, it means that you're paying attention. Samsung is a company from South Korea, if you didn't know, and they've been using Vietnam as one of their biggest factory hubs for well over 15 years. In fact, across that period of time, they have set up nearly 30 places inside of the country to build their various items. To that end, they've been hailed as one of the biggest investors in Vietnam, stating that they've put many billions of dollars into the country to make these factories and help make Vietnam a leading exporter of items within the region. But the red flags, well, they're still there. If you go to some of the official websites about it, you'll see that they don't exactly hide the reasons that they invest in Vietnam in the first place. First off, they note that it's a good alternate to China, which is not a bad thing given the factory that you've seen before. However, they also note the low cost but skilled labor that they can get in the company. There's actually one website out there where you can discover that the minimum hourly wage in some places is well below one American dollar when you convert the currency. Like I said, there's a dark side to factories that has to be acknowledged. Number 14. The Tesla Gigafactory 3 Now here's one that's ironic in all the ways that matter. I don't even know what that means, it's just written for me so I read it from the script. Anyways, after all, you've heard the recent news about the Tesla Cybertruck, right? Well, before that news came out in 2024, Tesla was riding high in some ways in 2023 because of their Gigafactories that they had been building up all over the world. Tesla Gigafactory 3 is located in Shanghai, China, and it's meant to be one of their biggest producers of electric vehicles. To their credit, after being built in 2019 and getting all of the production lines going, they did cross the 2 million mark in 2023 and even made 1 million electric vehicles in just 13 months. Now that is impressive. Not only that, they can apparently get a car done in just 37 seconds, which is about half of what happens at the Tesla Gigafactory in Texas. With all things firing on all cylinders, Tesla hopes to expand the factory so that they can continue cranking out cars and lower the price of the worldwide models to under $25,000. And that would be great for those who love EVs. Let's just hope the safety rating isn't what helped lower the cost on the cars. Number 13. Jean-Luc Legadaire Up to this point in the video, we have talked about a lot of things, and now it's time to talk about planes. Because of course planes need a large facility to be built, and surely enough in Europe, the crew over at Airbus needed a place to make their A380 planes, so they built Jean-Luc Legardaire. The largest European industrial project, which I have probably mispronounced, is impressively large at 490 meters long, 250 meters wide, and 46 meters high. That is large, and it does kind of need to be when you think about how it's making massive airplanes that are literally designed to hold a ton of people on board. What's truly fascinating is that despite its large amount of space, it was built in just over two years. They did this by ensuring that the plane that they would build and the place that it would be built in were perfectly in sync. The 200,000 square meter plant is located on a 200 hectare site dedicated to Airbus and its subcontractors for all kinds of activities that are related to aircraft development. You know, like how they're already working on their next plane, because we can't be satisfied with what we have now. Oh, heaven forbid. Anyway, they've been making the planes there for quite a while, and they've been doing good ones, so Boeing should probably take some notes. Number 12. NASA's Vehicle Assembly Building What vehicle goes higher than an airplane? Well, the Space Shuttle, of course. Yes, we're heading to NASA for this one, but not just any part of its institution, the NASA Vehicle Assembly Building. This is where everything gets put together before they take it to the launch pad for a journey to the stars above. At an astonishing 160 meters tall, 218 meters long, and 158 meters wide, the single-story building, believe it or not, covers an area of 8 acres and encloses a volume of over 3 million cubic meters. But that's only the beginning of how crazy the big space is. Because of its size, it can have its own weather patterns, and that's kind of crazy. As you can imagine, the building has seen many things over the years, which includes being there for the Apollo missions and getting their rockets attached for launch, to seeing NASA retire, the space shuttle, and going to different methods to get things up into space. Without this building and the space they had to make everything work, 
we likely would not have gone into space or even to the moon in the first place. So everyone should be grateful for this great big building. Number 11. The Boeing Everett Factory Now I just talked about Boeing and I'm going to talk about one of their factories that makes their famous planes. I'll stick with the facts for now. The Boeing Everett facility is the largest building on Earth by volume, covering of just about 40 hectares, and it has an interior volume of 13.3 million cubic meters. It's so big, in fact, that it's pretty much a city unto itself. It has everything the employees could ever need, including medical facilities, a bank, and even a daycare for their children. And if you've ever wondered why they need such a space, well, that's because this was the building in which the legendary 747 was built in. They overhauled a military building, of all things, to ensure that they could do the proper construction, and it took a breakneck pace to get it operational, but it was done in the end. Fast forward to now, and while they're still making planes, those planes are not always in top condition. Not to mention, they're not being that nice to their employees. I guess that just uh, goes to show you how times have changed. Number 10. General Electric India Here we're going to talk about General Electric, who have spent over $200 million to put a massive plant in India to try and make more of their products. Just as important, they're not having the plant focus on only one thing, but instead they're making a variety of items all at once. According to them, this is part of their flexible factory idea that will have an internet system by which all the various machines will talk to each other in order to ensure that things get done right and efficiently. It's a nice concept, I'll give you that. We just have to make sure that the workers are treated as well as the items and the machines that are inside of the place. Number 9. The Kia Hwasung Plant Are you noticing all the car plants in this video? Well, it should not be a surprise, because the vehicle industry is a vast space featuring numerous big names, and pretty much everyone has to have a big plant in order to crank out their cars. This time around, though, we're going to be talking about Kia. If you don't know, Kia is actually an affiliate of Hyundai, and they have a large factory in South Korea that they call their own. The site in Hwasong was Kia's first plant and is responsible for producing a variety of Kia models. This includes the K5, the K8, and the EV6, all of which are big parts of their lineup. Curiously, they made headlines in 2023 for a large fire in the factory that actually shut down production, but thankfully they were able to get back up and running. Number 8. Belvedere Assembly Plant now, I bet you can't guess where the Belvedere assembly plant is. If you guessed Illinois, well, you'd be right. The reason that this site is on the list isn't only because of its large size or its grand history, it's technically not even tied to one company, but to several over the many years of its life. The reason it's here is because the plant was the source of a major auto worker strike one that the workers had actually won, and part of that deal was to transform the plant into one that would focus on developing electric vehicles. Now that's a huge deal, and it's one that could reverberate all throughout the industry, which many would say is a good thing. The shift to electric is a much needed one, and if plants like this were to take a stand and do that, well, others may hopefully follow. Number 7. Meyer Werft now we're heading back to Germany, where this time we're having a look at a shipyard named Meyer Werft. Founded in 1795 and starting with small wooden vessels, today Meyer Werft is a builder of luxury passenger ships. Given the state of the ship industry, especially the passenger industry with all of the cruises and voyages that people love to go on, you can bet that the company is doing good business, especially if their luxury ships are truly luxurious. They boast about having the largest roofed construction dock in the world, and they have about 3,500 employees at their beck and call to help crank out up to four ships a year. Now, that may not sound like a lot, but when you look at the size of these ships, well, it kind of is. You have to remember, they have to build both on the outside and the inside to a high standard, and that takes some time. Number 6. Lockheed Martin Marietta Plant Now, I already showed you planes before, but those were what you would call civilian aircraft. How about the ones that are used by the military? 
In the United States, the main aerospace company that's used to bring military craft to life is called Lockheed Martin. These are the people behind some of the most iconic U.S. warplanes ever, which includes the C-130 Hercules, which has been made over 2,700 times in the Lockheed Martin Marietta plant. The plane has been in service for decades and has evolved with the times. It can be used for several kinds of missions in the air, which includes recon, refueling of other vessels, and as a fighter. It's so good that even other countries have been buying them where they can, and over half of the 2,700 that I mentioned before are still in service to this day. Number 5. Intel Ocotillo Campus Surprisingly, we've not talked about the true tech companies and factories that they sometimes have in order to ensure that they can make their various tech work. Intel is one of the most important tech companies in the world, and as a result, they need lots of space to make their stuff. In 2020, they decided to make the Intel Ocotillo campus out of Arizona. It began with Fab 42, which was meant to be a fabrication plant for semiconductors. As time then went on, Intel decided to make two more fabs right next to it, fabs 52 and 62, and they built them at the same time. Some may believe that that's overkill, but when you really think about it, the semiconductor industry has arguably never been bigger than it is right now, as so many devices need them, and the pandemic actually caused a massive shortage. So, once these are all up and running, Intel may have a juggernaut of a site in order to produce their wares. Number 4. Renault Flynn's Plant Now we'll go to France and look at another car factory. The Renault Flynn's Plant is now the biggest and oldest plant from the company in the world, and it has quite the size to it. It sits on 237 hectares, of which 67 are occupied by covered buildings. As for the production the plant did, between 1952 and the summer break of July 2009, the plant had assembled over 16,850,000 vehicles. It doesn't only make cars, though. It also makes various parts for its own vehicles and even for Nissans. In fact, they have even manufactured Nissans in the past. Sometimes you do what you gotta do to stay above. Number 3. Huawei Now we're going back to China to talk about Huawei. This is a big tech company that likes to brag about everything that it can do, and if you were to go to its sites, it would show you all kinds of fancy things that they're trying to incorporate within their large factories. For example, they're trying to make a fully connected factory in the confines of the internet, the goal, not unlike another factory I talked about earlier, is to make everything so connected that one part of the factory is always in tune with the other parts so that they can better get the work done. It's a nice idea in theory, though obviously the tech may have other ideas for them. But if they can make a more efficient factory, well, more power to them, and they also claim to have the robots on their side, so you know what that means. Number 2. The Toyota Sudasumi Plant one more car factory for the road, where this time we have Toyota, a dominant presence in Japan, and their Toyota Sudasumi plant has even been around for 75 years. In recent years, the company has gone the extra mile to make not only the best cars, but to help and ensure the local environment is taken care of. They even made a factory 10 times larger than before, all the while ensuring that it was good for the environment and even served as a teaching facility for how to help better the environment around them. The new plant is solar powered and has all kinds of other renewable energy sources attached to it. It's really kind of unique to see a car company go so far to better the environment. Number 1. The China Steel Corporation For this final entry, we have the China Steel Corporation that can be found in Taiwan and was established in December of 1971. Its annual output of crude steel is about 10 million metric tons, and the irony here is that Taiwan and China don't exactly get along, despite what China wants people to think. One of the other ironies is that China is in great need of steel because they're trying to make their country more modern on a grand scale. Specifically, they're trying to transform many of the small towns of their nation into much larger cities, and so they need the steel in order to make that happen. Thus, a large factory cranking steel out on a regular basis is a must-have thing for them.
That's all from the many factories of the world and the various creations that they help to produce. If you were to look around in your home, how many items would you say you've likely come across that come from factories like these? What new innovations do you feel that factories have to undergo so that they can grow with the times that we're now in? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time.